guys please join me in giving them a warm welcome to the stage to Vanessa Colmenar in Bo Capital, David Barroso, founder of Counter Craft, Francisco Vinel, advisor to Randit, Monica Pal, CEO of 4IQ, and Alberto Gomez, partner at Adara Ventures. Thanks guys. Buenos dias, good morning. Um, so we're going to talk about cybersecurity, which is a subject that cannot be ignored anymore, as everybody knows. And actually, despite the fact that cybersecurity has, over the last decade, become far more common parlance and is, in fact, quite a crowded space from an investment perspective, still there are intrepid people who leap into the market, have new ideas, have a new approach, which keeps us all on our toes and will, I think, make quite a dent in, to the legacy players who have been relying, I think, on, on general misunderstandings in the marketplace of how you keep attackers out. My name is Vanessa Colomar. I'm a partner at Invoke Capital. We started Invoke about five years ago to invest in what we call fundamental technologies. Essentially, that's turned out to be machine learning, artificial intelligence-led technologies, which have an unfair advantage because of that technology in the marketplace. Our first investment was a cybersecurity business. It's called Darktrace. It took, at the time, a very different approach, which was saying, you can't keep the bad stuff out. Acknowledge that hackers will get into your network. How you're going to spot that they're there? Uses machine learning to profile the behavior on your network, understand what normal is in your enterprise so that it can stop the, the abnormal, the, the attack, before it gets very serious. I'm going to turn to the rest of my panelists so that they can introduce themselves and their companies that they work for, and we'll get the conversation started. David? Oh, thank you, Vanessa. So my name is David Barroso. I'm the CEO of Countercraft. Um, we, what we have is what we think is going to be the next wave of cybersecurity. Because nowadays, companies, they just try to respond to incidents. They try to close all the holes, close all the gaps they have. They do incident response. So, but your attackers are going to hit you again. They are not because it's something targeted, something that is not uh, randomly uh, targeting you. So the idea is that we need to try to manipulate them at the end of the day. So we need to control them. That's the idea that we have in mind. So what we do is we create different sets of traps. We deploy them internally, externally, so that we can create some type of counter intelligence. So the idea is trying to manipulate them, trying to force to make them mistakes. And we think it's going to be the next hit in cybersecurity because it's like the next step we need to do. So that's what we do. Thank you. Francisco? Thank you. My name is Francisco Ginea, and I'm the VP of Channels and Partnerships of Randed. And Randed is a company that started with a similar view of what's, what's the situation, as David has just explained. You are going to be hit. The attackers are going to keep on getting into, into your system. So you need to do something different. What we decided is that as one of the main vectors of infection for the companies and one of the main problems that big corporations have are the vulnerabilities and the patching of all their web services exposed to the internet, we have to do something different. And what Randed has developed is a technology that transforms the HTML code that is going to be sent to the people that is connecting to to the web services or your workers that are browsing the internet, we are making it pass through our appliance and we are transforming the HTML code in a continuous streaming of images you can interact with, wiping out all the HTML code so there is no malware and there is no infection and there is no visibility of what's on the web server and what's the web server situation if they have vulnerabilities, everything is hidden, everything is isolated behind our, our platform. So channels become safe. Great, thank you. Monica. My name is Monica Pal, and I'm CEO of 4IQ. Uh, 4IQ uh, was founded by Julio Casal that you just heard from. Uh, Julio previously founded a company called Alien Vault, which Adara and several others uh, invested in. Alien Vault is an open source sim doing really well. Um, and, but 4IQ was founded because Julio noticed that you know, all the technologies were busy looking at the network, looking at the IT infrastructure. And at the end of the day, you know, it's all about people, right? Uh, stuff happens, uh, hackers 
break in, et cetera, or people mistakenly accidentally leave things open, but it's all about people. And so 4IQ really focused on identities and identity intelligence. So we have software that allows uh, companies to go and uh, search the internet, surface, social, deep and dark web, looking for exposure. So basically accidentally lost information or hacked and dumped in the open uh, uh, spaces, information on identities. So. Thanks, Alberto. Um, <clears throat> good morning. My name is uh, Alberto Gomez. I'm one of the partners at uh, at, our, at our Ventures. We're a uh, an early stage uh, venture capital firm. Uh, a little like Vanessa, we also invest in uh, companies that seek to develop an unfair advantage through technology. We focus uh, particularly on on uh, deep tech, meaning cybersecurity, um, big data, artificial intelligence, enterprise applications, etc. And cybersecurity, indeed, is one of our um, key sectors of focus. We've invested in companies like uh, Alien Vault. Um, we're also you know, uh, proud investors of uh, Encountercraft and, and 4IQ. And uh, you know, we, we think that, uh, that in, in Spain and, and in Europe, there are uh, you know, great technologies uh, being developed. And, and our effort is to try to help them uh, globalize, scale, and uh, become category leaders in, in their sectors. Thank you. So I'm going to start with, with you for the first question. Um, so we've seen that, that we are, you are, the new wave of, of cyber technology, if you like, cyber security. Are companies that you're selling to embracing the idea that they need to adapt in their defenses? Or is it still a hard sell? Uh, I would say that depends on the sector, on the vertical. Uh, for instance, if we go to the finance industry, uh, they are embracing this new technology. They want to do something more. So they are looking for new innovative products. Of course, there are other sectors that they are not so mature. If you go, for instance, to the industrial sector or, or even to the SME, all the small, medium companies, still they are far away from the financial sector. So I would say that the financial sector is the top one that is embracing new technologies. Uh, but there are other sectors that are going slowly, trying to adapt to the new technologies. So it depends more on the sector. Do you see the same? Or? Yeah, I, I mostly agree with what David has said. I think financial sector is the one that is m more uh, pioneer in terms of looking at new cybersecurity t t technologies. Obviously, I mean, they have they, they, uh, they have a strong need of protecting their assets, uh, their client assets. Uh, 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 I think they are the pioneers, but in our case, for instance, retail is very close and utilities is, is very close also to the financial sector. Right. And do you, from your point of view, are you working with large companies as well, or is it? More? Yeah, so. Um uh, you know, so one of the, the use cases for our technology is actually identity theft uh, uh, detection, if you will. Uh, and so our customers are uh, identity theft service providers. So consumers, people can go and uh, buy identity theft insurance from these companies. Um, I would say, you know, a year ago, Panama Papers broke out, yeah. right? Uh, then the Yahoo breach happened towards the end of the year. And just recently, the Equifax breach has happened. So I would say that month by month, week by week, we are seeing awareness increase. So I think that's step one. Uh, so the very same people who a year ago we went to didn't care, even though you know stuff was happening, are more concerned today. Uh, but I wouldn't say action on that is going to take time. Right. And does this... I guess whet your appetite as an investor, no? That the demand is high. I, uh, I think as a yeah. I, I mean, certainly as an investor, uh, I like to. I mean, that there's many opportunities, uh, you know, that exist in the market, you know, because the threats are uh, so overwhelming, you know, that um, you know companies uh, are you know looking for solutions that have budgets and want to improve on what they have. Uh, I do think that uh, there are very uh, interesting investment opportunities that are targeted at the financial sector or other top tier uh, enterprises, um, you know, companies that are using technology for um, automation and response um, to improve what's existing with new technology. 
Uh, but I also think that there's opportunities to, for example, correct the human error that, uh, you know, that, that exists also in, uh, you know, in, in actually deploying these uh, cybersecurity uh, solutions. And uh, also there are, uh, I think, opportunities for um, also simplifying the offering because on the, on the customer's end, there's such an such a enormous uh, number of companies, each offering their own little technology. Uh, if you go to the RSA conference in San Francisco, this thing sort of grows every year. That, that must be the best performing cybersecurity business in Silicon Valley, the, the, that conference. <laughs> Uh, and it, it's just overwhelming. Every little sector has, you know, seven or eight people trying to improve on that. So, um, you know, I think, I think there's also space uh, for not just having great technology and great products, but for simplifying what is being offered to, um, you know, to the, to the end consumer. Right, good point. Um, so as somebody who's guilty of not simplifying <laughs> for the end consumer, how do you break through? How, how hard has it been to get to being on this stage today? Um, and I get all three of you, because you're still in these early stages of development. Where are the pain points in pushing through the noise and, and selling yourselves? Uh, I guess that there is, depends on, on your product or your service. Uh, if it's something that is perhaps too innovative, sometimes you need to do some sort of evangelization. Uh, so you need to evangelize uh, the market. You need to start working with analysts. You need to start working with uh, all those early adopters that can help you in the first steps. Uh, so it's something that is sometimes very tough because um, if it's a new product and it's not, there is not uh, like a magic quadrant from Garner, yeah. it's sometimes difficult. But uh, I think that step by step, if you go to the right places, like for instance, you need to be at the RSA conference because if you are not there, it's like you don't exist at all. So, but if you go step by step, uh, working, I mean, if you have competitors, that's something good because they are creating the market for you as well. So, working with competitors, so, uh, I think is something important and you need to push in that direction as well. So, it's a mix of uh, creating the market plus looking for those early adopters plus working with the competition, more or less. So I would say that those are the three factors you need to push. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, in our case, uh, it was a mix of multiple things. Uh, well, first, the company was founded by people that had a long history in the cybersecurity industry. So when they had this idea, they approached some of the big customers they had been working with along all those those years presented their idea as a proposal and uh, asked them if they were open to have a proof of, of concept and if, uh, if it was successful invest in, in a project to, to, to implement this technology. Uh, the response was positive uh, the minimum viable product worked, so uh, we started to grow from that companies that are very big references in the market. Uh, actually, the isolation technology is something new, but there are popping out companies in different countries, in the UK, uh, several in the US, in uh, Israel, and uh, I think we all, all together, even if we compete in the market, we are evangelizing the market also and evangelizing the, the, the big enterprises about the viability of this isolation uh, technology solution. Recently, one of our competitors, Fireglass, has been acquired by Symantec. And somebody thought that that could be negative for us. I think is extremely positive. I mean, that a huge company as Symantec decides to invest in a company that was m making isolation as we do is a big boost for our credibility and for the isolation technology as a, as a solution. Yeah. Um, so I would actually question the assumption of uh, question the question, right? How do you break out through the noise? Do you need to break out as a cyber company? Do you need to break out, right? I think it really depends on what your product is and who you want to reach. 
Um, I think there are some products that you can pick, figure out who you need to talk to, and then you just have to use your network and get to the right people in those organizations. Um, but then there are other products that maybe every company, every enterprise should know about, and so that's a completely different uh, game. So three different <laughs> models, basically. You evangelize, you pre-sell your idea before you've even developed it, or you just don't bother and you just do <laughs> direct to consumer. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, we can't have a conversation about cybersecurity without talking about attacks and the future landscape. Um, and I guess from, from all perspectives, what is it that keeps you up at night from the point of view of evolving hacks, um, or attacks rather? Um, is it the fact that they're ever changing? Is it the fact that perhaps we oughtn't be worried so much about North Korea's finger on the red button and it is a cyber war type scenario where, actually, let's start with you this time. <laughs> Um, you know, I think the reality is that it's not, you know, will you get hacked? It's have you, you know, have you're, you are hacked, yeah. right? Or because the issue is not the bad people are not just on the outside. It's there's a lot of insider issues as well, as you know. And so, cyber, I think, is just a reflection of life. And so, as long as human beings are going to be in conflict, you're going to have conflict in the cyber world. And so, you know, let's just realize that the stuff is happening and is going to happen. We clearly need to protect and prevent as much as possible, but then also figure out how you're going to you know, <laughs> respond and ensure. So I think you have to just take a realistic, pragmatic view to the, the reality. Uh, well, OK, I, I would say that the, the elephant in the room are those nation state sponsor attacks, uh, because uh, Spies spy. No, that's something normal. They have been doing that for ages. But now they are using technology, and they are not only spying on enemies, but also in allies and also in companies. So I would say that that's the main elephant in the room. As those nation states, they have tons of budgets. They have a lot of money, not only to research and find new zero days or create or develop new tools, but also they have people in the ground they mix the human intelligence of, from the intelligence world with the new technology world. So they are targeting companies worldwide. And I'm talking about all the intelligence services, not only in the US or France or Israel or Spain. Or, so that, for me, is the, the thing that uh, worries me the most. The mm -hmm. most. In, a, in our case, and specifically for the uh, type of services that we, we protect, that are web-based services, uh, uh, we quit on following the traditional process of detect, analyze, react, or, or patch. We just took the approach that any type of traffic could be malicious, potentially. So we transform everything, 100%. We don't analyze anything. We, we, we just transform anything uh, with built-in building on that basis that anything could be potentially malicious. So we, we, don't, we don't waste time in discriminating or analyzing the information. This could be an attack. This could be not. This is a real customer. I mean, we transform everything. That's right. it. Alberto, from your point of view, is this a good time to be a European-based investor looking at these sorts of technologies? Um, yes, I think it is a, uh, a great time because there um, you know, the, the, the number of companies and the size of the market um, is, is very attractive. Uh, and also because even though there are uh, still alliances, um, you know, between continents and places, uh, you know, I, I subscribe to sort of the same thesis that David was saying earlier that people are spying on each other, you know, when they, one of the big hacks is not just Equifax or but the Snowden papers, you know, so when all of that came out, uh, you know, it became clear that also uh, all the European, uh, you know, heads of state that consider the U.S. their ally and, and still do say, well, yes, but my ally is listening to me. So, uh, you know, I, I'd like to control the, the, the number of backdoors, you know, that companies have to my innermost secrets. So uh, I think there is uh, room in Europe for companies that are that are local, uh, you know, <laughs> there, there is also opportunities for, for companies that, that are global and that, and that are based either in the U.S. Or, or, or Europe or anywhere, but that some 
uh, you know, may succeed because of that uh, sort of national uh, or, or regional mm -hmm. sort of focus and uh, alliance, um, you know. Yeah. So uh, in, indeed, yes. Good. Um, where do you think you, your company, will be in three, five years' time? Well, that's a tough question. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, our current strategy is trying to be leaders in Europe uh, for the next two years. And then we would like to jump to the US and compete face to face with our competitors there. So I would say that in three or four years, we would like to be in the US with a strong presence there. So being leaders in Europe plus a strong presence in the US, that would be our, my wish. Yeah. yeah. Well, in our case, we believe that the isolation is a technology that is here to stay. Uh, there will be more companies competing for that space. So in three years, we want to be everywhere <laughs> as much as possible and covering as much of, of the isolation market as we can. Okay, IQ4. So today we power uh, the biggest identity theft service providers in the US and they are basically taking us global. So we will certainly be global <laughs> in that space. Great, well, thank you everybody for your time this morning and um, I guess we look forward to the next. Session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Isabel, yes, Alan. Thanks, guys. Excellent.